من من شهور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم. نبتدي ان شاء الله تعالى من التفسير of the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah from Tafsir Imam Al-Sahli رحمه الله تعالى in verse number 113 and 114. 113 and 114 from Surah Al-Baqarah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. وقالت اليهود ليست النصارى على شيء وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء وهم يتلون الكتاب كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون مثل قولهم فالله يحكم بينهم يوم القيامة فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون. 113 says The Jews said that the Christians follow nothing and the Christians said that the Jews follow nothing. Though they both recite the scripture, like to their word said, who know not, like to their word said, who know not, Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection about that wherein they have been differing. This is another statement in the context of the ayat that talks about the people of the book and how they each claim to be the absolute truth and everyone else on falsehood uh, which is the case with everyone uh, but this is as we see in the context of condemning all of them when they deviated away from the truth and as we heard last week in the previous ayah when they said that only those who would enter Jannah are those who are the Jews of the Christians this is their wishful thinking. Bring your evidence if you are truthful. And then the ayah after that says, Bala, man aslama wajhahu lillahi wa huwa muhsin. Nay, the one that would be successful and enter Jannah, the one that submitted his face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is a good doer. For him, falahu ajruhu wa inda rabbihi wa la khawfa alayhi wa lahum ihsaroon. The reward will be for him by his Lord, and there is no fear on them, nor shall they grieve which is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since he created Adam alayhi salam till the day of judgment because they just interrupted this sequence of the prophets from Adam alayhi salam till the prophet alayhi salatu salam the deen was one, the message was one to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and the same thing Musa alayhi salam came with and Isa alayhi salam but their followers, the shaitan deviated them from that tawheed, from that truth to claim other things, to believe in false beliefs, uh, to disbelieve in uh, the messengers like the Jews did with disbelieving in Isa السلام, the son of Mary, and then after that the Prophet وسلم, and some of them committed shirk, different types of shirk, and the uh, deviation of the Christians when they disbelieved in the Prophet وسلم, and before that they worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's Isa alayhi salam or the mother of Isa alayhi salam or the saints afterwards so the, the pure aqeelah has been distorted deviated away from what every messenger came with so al-Islam which is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this was the religion of all the prophets so they claimed how they don't have a proof uh, and they would never have a proof why? because the truth is that whoever worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is on the truth so then after that, and we talked about that in details last week. Uh, after that, uh, this ayah, as Ibn Kathir rahimahullah and others, they said it has a munasaba, or it was revealed, when the wealth of Najran, the delegation of Najran from the Christians, they came to the Prophet والسلام, and they uh, had questions, and the Prophet وسلم, answered them, and so on. And, uh, many verses of Surah Al Imran uh, was a response to this. Uh, from the beginning to uh, 80 something ayat of Ali Imran refuting the cause of the Christians in a very nice way of the people of the book uh, to Waft Najran and those who followed them but when they came uh, some of the chiefs of the Jews they came in Medina also to the message of the Prophet وسلم, and they debated with them so they end up uh, refuting one another 
they said that you're disbelievers, and they, the other one said that you're disbelievers. So the ayah was repeated. وَقَالَتْ الْيَهُودُ لَيْسَتْ النَّصَارَ so The Jews, they say, لَيْسَتْ النَّصَارَ That النَّصَارَ النَّصَارَ, as we said, refers to the city of النَّصِرَ Right? Nazareth, uh, as they translated. Uh, those who claim to be the followers of Isa alayhi salam. The Jews said that the Nasara, they said the Nasara ala shay. They are not on anything. Shay is anything. The, the smallest thing is called shay. But they said ala shay does not mean, as we heard in the translation, they are on nothing. They are on something, right? But they said they are not on anything or they are on nothing benefit. That's what it means, right? And this is something that the word shay. It depends on the context, but many times it's used like this. When you say to that to someone, less you are not, you are on nothing, meaning that you are on nothing benefiting. You're doing something, but you're not doing something that is benefiting to you, so as if you are on nothing. So they said that about the Christians, they are on nothing, meaning benefiting. That means they'll be the people of the hellfire. وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء عند النصارى. The Christians, they said about the Jews, they are on nothing. وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ This jumla, as they say in Arabic, jumla haliya, meaning while they are reciting the book. They say that when they both claim to be reciting the book. And the book here refers to uh, Torah and al Injil, Right? And some said that it refers to the Torah only, or the books that they have, since they are called the people of the book. So when they recite, and both of them, they recite the Torah, but the Christians, they recite the Injil too. When they recite the book and they would still claim such a claim, which is an amazing thing. How the arguments and the ignorance can take the person that far. Uh, there's a hadith of the Prophet والسلام, and we heard it before, about uh, the Muslims. They, some of them might fall into the same evil disease. They have the book, right, but they deviate from the truth. Quran is still saved, the Sunnah of the Prophet is saved, but some people they refuse to follow the truth in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and deviate from the truth. These books before they've been altered and so on, and still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ So imagine when the books are so clear, and the wahi is so clear, and still people sometimes they refuse to be on the truth, and they will differ among themselves, which is this ummah also fell into the same trap and they differed among each other and they call each other names and they are disbelievers, they are deviated and so on. And when that happens, is it they're all deviated? Of course not. There are people on the truth and there are people on falsehood. But to whom yathlun al-kitab, the Prophet ﷺ, when Nabi when the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with them and he said something, he said, This is when the time would come when the ilm will be taken away. So he said, عنه, how would the ilm, how would the knowledge will be taken away when we are reciting the Qur'an, 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 how would the ilm would go away when we are reciting the Qur'an and, uh, to our children, and our children would recite the Qur'an to their children and to their children, till the day of judgment. So how the ilm would be taken away. So the Prophet وسلم, said, that in kuntu, أظنك من أفقه من بالمدين أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. He said, I thought that you are the most or from the most knowledgeable people from al Medin. How can you say this when I thought that you are from among the the most knowledgeable ones? And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, هذه اليهود والنصارى يقرؤون التوراة والإنجيل. The Jews, the Jews and the Christians, they read the book, right? And they don't benefit from it, and they're deviated. They have the books, but they deviate. So it's not about the presence or the physical presence of the book; it's how whether they are applying it or not. So the ayah is referring to this. وهم يتلون الكتاب and they still fall into these major deviations. كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون مثل قولهم كذلك كذلك means the like, right? ذلك is the the اسم الإشارة, right? To something far. ك Right? Uh, gives the meaning of myth, like, like those. كَذَلِكَ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Like those who said, those who have no knowledge, they said the same thing. لا يعلمون. They don't even have a book like they do. And that refers said to the nations before. 
and some said to the Arab uh, at the time of the Prophet uh, at the time of Jahili, the Mushrikeen of Quraysh and so on, they don't have a book. So the Jews and the Christians, they said exactly the same as those pagans among the Arab in which the Jews and the Christians, they should have been uh, in a better situation because they have book, they have the books and they have uh, you know, the original books, some of it is still truth uh, with them and so on and they still deviated from the truth. There's a very delicate benefit here that some of the ulama mentioned. Although the Jews and the Christians are on these deviations and so on, but still with that deviation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show the, the virtue and the honor of al-ilm, of knowledge, even if the person has some knowledge and he's deviated, but he is, we don't say he's better than the one that doesn't have knowledge and deviated, but those who do not have knowledge that are lesser than them. Right? That's, so that's why the people of the book, they are closer to the uh, Muslims than others. Why? Because of this uh, sort of knowledge that they have. Even though they're outside the fold of Islam, they're still disbelievers and so on. And that's why كَذَلِكَ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ مِثْلَ قَالِمْ Those who have no knowledge whatsoever. Right? So, uh, knowledge definitely is an honor. Even among the disbelievers, it gets the disbelievers closer to matters of an iman if you have the, some knowledge uh, better or more than those who do not have anything. فالله يحكم بينهم يوم القيامة فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون الله سبحانه وتعالى يحكم بينهم meaning that he will judge between them يوم القيامة in the day of the قيامة in the day of resurrection فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون in what they have differed among themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between them. And the hukm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we talked about it before, as the ulama, they say it is of three types. There is the, or two types. The hukm, uh, dini, the religious uh, judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the religious order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is from the wahi of Allah. In al hukmu illa lillah, amara illa ta'budu illa iya. The hukm is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the religious ones. الحكم ال ال القدري الكوني the the حكم is by the قدر of Allah سبحانه وتعالى with regards to the things that already happened if it happened that means that's the حكم of Allah سبحانه وتعالى even if it's something that is evil it's still the حكم of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and Allah سبحانه وتعالى does not create pure evil when it happens already happened it's for the wisdom and Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the most wise so that the believers would uh, be true believers as a result of the presence of what is evil and maybe as a punishment for the believers as a result of their deviation or sins and so on. And that's why the believers should witness this hukm al kawni also. They should uh, deal with the hukm al kawni and be pleased with it. Which is something that many of the Muslims today, today they don't understand. When we say for example what happened to the Muslims or the situations of the Muslims and sad situations and so on, People should be pleased with the qadr of Allah. How can a person be pleased with situations that are bad? You're pleased because this has happened by the most wise, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can a Muslim is not pleased with this? This is the qadr of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ordains and decrees something bad? Never. Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, decrees what fits the wisdom of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not bad in the absolute sense. No matter what you think it is, right? what's happening to the Muslims, East and West individuals, anyone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not decree what is bad. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree, decrees all, always what is good based on the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So instead of being busy with uh, why this, why that, and, and sadness and so on, no, there's a wisdom and a person should be pleased with that so that he would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him. And as we said before, that this Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, Ummah to Marhuma, that Allah has mercy on this Ummah, that the punishment for this Ummah in this life, not in the hereafter. The punishment of it in this life, as the Hadith in Surah al imagine, by what? By the earthquakes, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and al-fitan uh, wal qatl and the tribulations and the killing. So this is a punishment. Punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto this Ummah, when the Ummah would deviate from the truth disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always good, right? And the believers should witness that good from which sense? The religious one or the kawni one? It's the qadr one. 
from the qadr, from that time that everything is by the qadr of Allah and that means everything is good. You know, when someone uh, bad happens to someone, well, we say, inshallah, this is good for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you. Right? Be patient. Be obedient to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree He's the most wise. Although it might be death, loss of wealth, you know, a lot of pain, things like that, how can that be good? It depends on how the person is being patient and obedient to Allah. This would elevate his level. Right? It's not necessarily good in matters of the wah, right? But it's a good thing based on the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's clear. So these are the two types of the hukm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this one, as some of the ulama, they refer to of the third type, which is a hukm that would be part of the jaza or the recompense or the punishment of the reward in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between them. The hukm here is not in this dunya. The hukm here will be in the hereafter. Although the matter has been decreed by which type of hukm? Hukm is shari, deen. The one by the wahi because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, judged between them by saying that they're all on deviation unless they follow the Prophet So the hukm from the religious perspective is clear. But the hukm of dunya, with the hukm of this dunya, right, it will be in the day of judgment between them. Because those who will continue to believe in these uh, evil beliefs, they will die on that, and then the judgment will be between them in the day of judgment. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everybody will be dealt with, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. Nobody will be punished except by the, by the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one will be given reward except by the mercy and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi ma kanu fi yakhtalifun, in which what they differed among themselves. And this is not just for them, this is the case with anyone that is having differences. Uh, especially if the differences they would uh, refute to another, it means that they call each other deviants and disbelievers and so on. Imam Sa'di rahimahullah says, وَذَلِكَ أَنَّهُ بَلَغَ بِأَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ الْهَوَى وَالْحَسَنَةِ That the people of the book, Al-Hawa, Desire and envy, that means took them far away to the extent of which the hawa and the hasad, the desire and the envy took them far away that they uh, called each other deviants as a result of what? Not that they're seekers of the truth, they are basically following their desires and hasad or envy, which is mentioned in the previous verses. And this is the case also with this Ummah, Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu when you find the, the, the name calling of deviation and so on, some of them, right, or maybe, I'm not, I'm not saying about a particular thing, because of course the people of the truth, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala knows best, they have to refute what is evil. But uh, some of those who would be busy with, uh, with you know, calling each other deviants and, and so on and so forth, it might be the desire and the hasad and the envy, so the person has to make sure that he clean his heart from this. Clean his heart from desire, clean his heart from al-hasad. And al-hasad comes with the love of al-riyasa, to be in charge, right? to be a leader. And this is also something that the ulama they talked about. A person wants to be a leader. A leader doesn't have to be the president or the king. A leader with followers, right? So he wants to have his followers. He doesn't want to humble himself to be you know, with everyone else, he wants to have his own followers. So for one of the ways for a person to have his followers is to put down everybody else. Why? Because he's the only one of the truth. So the people come to him alone. They don't go to anyone else because of the envy. He wants that to be to his own self. He might be righteous in any other means and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from envy and desire and so on because this is something in the heart that can overtake the person. That's why we are ordered to stay away from means of any form of leadership unless it's been given to the person. So uh, desire and envy, as he said, بَعْضَ that they called each other disbelievers, كَمَا فَعَلَ الْأُمِّيُّونَ مِنْ مُشْرِكِ الْعَرَبِ وَغَيْرِ As the illiterate from the pagans of the Arab, they did, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the end. فَكُلُّ فِرْقَةٍ تُضَلِّ الْأُخْرَ Every group calls the other deviants. وَيَحْكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الْأَخِرَةِ بَيْنَ الْمُخْتَلِفِينَ بِحُكْمِهِ الْعَدْلِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between them in the hereafter, or between these people that differ among each other, by the just ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he informed his slaves with. الَّذِي أَخْوَرَ بِهِ عِبَادًا 
So this hukm in the Day of Judgment will be according to what has been shown into the religious hukm which we know it today. So do we know what the hukm is going to be in the year after? Between them? Yes, we know. Because that's what the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet said, that the hukm is that they're both on the land. That all of them are deviants. Why? Because they disbelieved in the Prophet ﷺ, they committed shirk and so on. So that's what the hukm will be in the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about that in the Quran in more than one verse about what's going to happen to the, in the Day of Judgment among them. Like the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah, they talk to Isa alayhi salam and so on and others. So the judgment in the Day of Judgment, we know it. And that's the virtue of this ummah. We already know what's going to happen to them in the Day of Judgment by the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّهُ لَا فَوْزَ وَلَا نَجَاتَ إِلَّا لِمَنْ صَدَقَ أَوْ صَدَّقَ جَمِيعًا الْبَيْءَ وَالْمُسْتَرِينَ No فَوْزَ, no success or uh, victory and no saving whatsoever oneself from the punishment of Allah except for those who believe all the prophets and the messengers. And وَمْتَثَلَ أَوَامِرَ رَبِّهِ وَاجْتَلَ لَنَوَاهِ And obeyed the orders of Allah and stayed away from the nawahi, the forbidden things. وَمَنْ عَلَاهُمْ فَهُوَ هَالِكْ and other than that, he is destroyed and perished. So this is the only way to for salvation, is to believe in all the messengers and the prophets, and disbelieving in one of them is like disbelieving in all of them. Then the next ayah, which means, and who are more unjust, than those who forbid that Allah's name be glorified and mentioned much in Allah's masajid and strive for their ruin. It was not fitting that such should themselves enter them except in fear. For them there is disgrace in this soup in this world and they will have a great torment in the hereafter. Waman Allah. Waman Allah uh, means and who is more Allah uh, is uh, is what of deed which is uh, no one is more unjust. And men here with the meaning of nafi, la azlam. That means there is no one more unjust than someone man'a masajid Allah yuthkar fi hasmu that prevented the masajid of Allah for the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be mentioned in it. And this is more uh, strong in the meaning. Why? Because it's, it's challenging. Right? If the ayah, how would you know that man here means la? Put a la. Of course, the Quran says man. But if you put la, la alla mimma man amsajallah. There is no one more unjust than someone uh, prevented the name of Allah to be mentioned and praised in the masajid in the houses of Allah. And it's more uh, stronger than saying la because it's a challenge. It's like a question. Is anyone more unjust than someone had, you know, preventing the name of Allah to be mentioned in the houses of Allah? There's nothing worse than this. Because the Masajid of Allah, it's mentioned Masajid Allah as a way to honor it, houses of Allah. And so how the best places on earth whatsoever, that it is built for the remembrance of Allah, people will be deprived from the remembrance of Allah in it. With how, as it will be mentioned. So this is one of the worst sins ever. And a dhul means something less. And that's what the original meaning of a dhulm. When a person commits injustice, that means he did something less. He took something away, which is the rights and so on. So there's nothing more worse or not, nothing worse than this. مِمَّا مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ Allah, Whoever deprived or prevented masajid Allah. And, and, and the masajid Allah, uh, the idafit masajid, when you, when you add the masajid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means what? Uh, it does not mean anything physical, right? It means this is to honor the masajid. This is the houses of Allah. And of course there's implications to this. If it's the masajid of Allah, that means it's not the masajid of some group of people. Right? Owner of a masjid. There's no such a thing of a, as an owner of a masjid. Or uh, uh, whether they call it uh, a person owner of a masjid, or a shura uh, owning a masjid, or committees owning a masjid. The masajid is the masajid of Allah. That's why this is a huge responsibility and a burden at the same time for someone because the kharab, as the ayah says, was fi kharabiha, and he took the means to destroy it. The ulama they say the destruction of the masajid is of two types: the kharab al-hissi, 
the physical harab, the physical destruction, destroying the masjid, you know, breaking the masjid physically till it's on the ground. And of course, this is such an evil thing. Or the other type of harab al ma'nawi, the non physical destruction of a masjid. How? When the name of Allah is being prevented from being mentioned in the message. When instead of spreading the truth, the message is the message of the Prophet ﷺ, what was being recited in the message of Allah, and what's the a'mal and the actions done in the message? The salah, of course, the citation of the Quran, uh, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the, the, the deen of Al Islam. So in the message, its job has been distorted, and instead of doing this, then the message becomes something else to promote evil, to promote deviation, to promote you know, and spread corruption as the, and see how that is linked to the Jews and the Christians and calling each other disbelievers and deviates and so on. So the masajid becomes the masjid of this group versus that group and this group and they're all against each other. Where is the masajid of Allah? Where is this uh, masjid where a person would spread the truth in it, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, without destroying it with the truth, not to spread evil and deviation and so on. So there's no one more unjust than this. Uh, that the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in it. fi kharabiha, he took the means to destroy it. Uh, and again, uh, you know, there are many forms of this. A person wants to spread the truth and he's being prevented from spreading the truth in the masjid because uh, maybe they don't like it. You know, in Islam there's no politically correct, by the way. As you see, the Jews are disbelievers, the Christians are disbelievers. This is what the Quran says. We're going to be trying to be nice and say nice uh, words. It doesn't work this way. Right? This is what the Quran says. This is what our deen says. There's only belief and disbelief. So when the, the messages are not giving the message as clear as it is like the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet then there's a problem. So, uh, and this is destruction to the messages when the truth is not being conveyed. Of course, this refers to some incidences as the Ulama they said in the Tafsir, whether it's uh, to the Jews and the Christians, and even the, the back in the old times where they helped some to destroy some of the houses of worship like Bukhtar Nasr when he killed the Jews and Bani Israel and they were helped by the Christians to kill the Jews or to kill from Bani Israel or vice versa and the envy and so on caused them to destroy some of the places of worship and so on and also for the Ushrikeen of Al-Arab when they prevented the Prophet and the Sahaba from going to Mecca and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing worse than this. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ مَا كَانَ لَهُمْ أَنْ يَدُخُلُوهَا إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ They are not, these people, they are not to enter it, إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ What does that mean? They should not enter it unless they have fear. Either it means that such an act, an evil act, those people, they, uh, they should not enter the masjid unless they would have fear in them. They, they should some said even they should have the fear of Allah of what the evil that they did. If they want to enter a masjid, how can they enter a masjid when they destroyed it? Instead, they should, they should have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some said that they should, and this is a glad tidings to the Prophet ﷺ, that they would take over Mecca and so on, and the disbelievers would not enter the masjid unless they are in state of fear as, as it happened to them in the day when the Prophet ﷺ entered Mecca. Uh, and others. لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الأخرة عذاب عظيم. To them in this dunya is خزي disgrace and in the hereafter a severe torment. So this is the warning for those who destroy the masajid, the houses of Allah, uh, that it's supposed to be for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, very briefly, one أظلم أي لا أحد أظلم وأشد جو. One أظلم again means no one is more in injustice. مما منع مساجد الله. Whoever deprived the masajid of Allah and dhikr ilayhi fiha from the remembrance of Allah wa iqamat al-salah and the rest of the ta'ad, the obedience of Allah. Wa sa'ad. Sa'ad originally means walking. But here means ijtahada wa badla usa'ah. Which means he took the effort and struggled and, and, and put the effort so that he would prevent the masajid from the remembrance of Allah. Fi kharabiha al-hissi wa al-ma'ni. The two types. He mentioned the physical kharab, the physical destruction and the non-physical destruction. الخراب الحسي، what is the physical one؟ هدمها وتخريبها وتقديرها 
to destroy it, to uh, do any physical harm to it, to make it dirty, to, to throw garbage in there, and so on. الخراب المعنوي ده من فيزيكال منع الذاكرين لاسم الله فيه. to prevent the people from remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in it. and it says وهذا عام لكل من يتصل بهذه الصفة. this is not to a specific situation. this is general to anyone that would fall into the same category. so أصحاب الفيل those who try to destroy the Kaaba they are part of this. وقريش when they prevented the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on the night on the on the year of Al-Hudaybiyah. When Nasara and the Christians, when they destroyed Beit al Maqdis, Jerusalem, and the rest of them in Anwar al Walama, al Sa'ina fi Kharabiya, those who just, those who try to destroy the houses of worship to oppose the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them that He uh, deprived them from entering it. Shara'an wa qadawan. Religiously and by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unless they are in the state of fear and humiliated. When they فلما أخافوا عباد الله أخافهم الله the جزاء the reward or the punishment is from the same sort of deed that they did when they caused the slaves of Allah to have the fear to enter the masajid and to be deprived from the remembrance of Allah Allah سبحانه وتعالى will bring the fear in their hearts as a result of their evil action so المشركون الذين صدوا رسوله the the disbelievers those who prevented the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم after that very shortly the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, uh, the, uh, uh, opened Mecca, liberated Mecca, and he prevented the mushrikeen from approaching the house of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed after that, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, innam al-mushrikuna najasun, fala yaqrabu al-masjid al-haram ba'da amin hada, or you will believe, indeed the mushrikun, the disbelievers are impure, najas, they should not approach the masjid al-haram after this year, right? So, as a result of their actions. And the people of <coughs> The elephant, as we know, that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them, and the uh, Christians, those who, when they destroyed Bayt al Maqdis, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them the believers and they uh, removed them from there, as it's mentioned uh, in Surah Al Isra and others, and the same thing, the same Sunnah repeats itself. Uh, and the ulama he says, Bil -ayah, that they took that evidence in this ayah, that it's not permissible. Uh, for making the kuffar to enter the masajid uh, unless uh, this is again this is tamkin al kuffar al masajid meaning that they can enter anytime they want and they just you know the masajid becomes free for them to do whatever they want to do in it of course this is consensus that is not permissible but if there is a situation where the people of the masjid they see there is a benefit of having someone to enter the masjid as the Prophet allowed with the Najran and so on to give them da'wah to the deen of Islam, then this is, uh, is permissible. But to give them the rights to enter, to worship, and to deviate, and so on, then the message should be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the punishment, as we heard, And he says, And says, this is now the last part here with the mafhum, with the understanding of the ayah. The ayah says there's no one more unjust than those who destroy the message, physically and non-physically. Then he says, if that's the case, this is the worst sin ever, then the best deed ever is to do the opposite, is to see, is to struggle and to take the means to erect the message, to build the message, and physically, and to make it alive with non-physical acts, with the worship of Allah, with the recitation of the Qur'an, with spreading the truth in the masajid, then it becomes the best deed ever, since the worst deed is to do the opposite. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Indeed, those who would build and revive the masajid of Allah, those who believe in Allah in the last day, the end. بَلْ قَدْ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِرَفْعِ بِيُوتِهِ وَتَعْظِيمِهِ وَتَكْرِيمِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered for his houses to be erected and built and honored فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِينَ اللَّهُ أَنْ تُرْفَعَ وَيَذْكَرَ فِي هَسْمُ And houses of Allah that Allah gave the permission for it to be erected and the name of Allah is to be mentioned and to the masajid there is ahkam kathira there is ruling of the masajid يَرْجِعُ حَصِرُهَا إِلَى مَرْبُونِ هَذِي الْأَيْتِ الْكَرِيمَةِ The summary of it is mentioned in this ayah and we need definitely to know the rulings of the masajid what are the different rulings of the masajid to be among those who fill the masajid with and give it 
physically and non physically. Many of the Muslims, when we build masjid, we don't know the ruling of the masjid. So the masjid are built not according to the right way. With the right, with the sincere intentions, but they are being, for example, extravagant and things of that nature, which is against the meanings of this. Or, again, to keep the masjid looking nice physically, but there is no real actions in the masjid by uh, spreading the truth and fulfilling the truth. Stop inshallah at this point. Inshallah, inshallah, Muhammad, inshallah.